Welcome back to the channel guys. Well today we have the return of the Burgundy bus and she's come back in for a few upgrades. Um, the client wasn't happy with the uh, the stock drums uh, brakes and as you know they they can be a little bit problematic adjusting them but um, you know with a bigger motor they just don't uh, they don't stop in modern traffic as good as what you want so we're going to put a uh, front end disc uh, conversion which I have over here and these are the um, Sherman uh, John Sherman discs which are bloody heavy Let's put them down there that's the um, the front discs as you can see because we're uh, running the stock uh, 15 inch uh, combi rims um, the, the actual disc itself isn't very big. Um, I mean, my pizzas are bigger than that pretty much, but anyway. Um, so then we've obviously got the calipers. Now, these ones are actually different to what I've got on my bus. Um, I got a feeling they've got an MP stamp on them. Yeah, they do, right there. So I'm not sure what they actually are off, but anyway. Master cylinder, um, that's the dual, dual version and just other little bits and pieces we've obviously got the brackets to put them on and the spacer and the rubber boot which my little rubber boot i think perished in about eight months just fell apart so that, that good old classic rubber again uh, but anyway we're going to put this um this kit into the front of it and obviously for that to run effectively we're also running a, a, a vacuum booster as well so we're going to plumb that in, uh, do it the same way. I've done uh, a few other buses and and utes as well. So we'll get that mounted in. Uh, and the other thing we have to do also is put some seatbelts in it. So we've got some brand new uh, retractable seatbelts, which we get. Uh, uh, these are the ADR approved ones from, uh, what are they from? Seatbelt safe or something. You know, see? Seat safe. Uh, there we go there and so you just order them in whatever color you got obviously we just went with black ones and uh, we'll get those installed as well so what has to happen in order to do this mod obviously we'll put it up on the lift remove all the front um, brakes uh, we have to redo the brake lines because there will be some t-junctions to the booster and unfortunately the motor's got to come out because it is very difficult, I'm just come and show you over here, to plumb in the vacuum line into the manifold. And if you have a look inside here, what we need to do is add a port into um, one of these little manifolds here. But we'll sort of, we might actually, because this is a twin port, we might actually plug, um, uh, plug the, the vacuum line off one of these uh, side um, uh, pipes here we'll see how we go we might we might even do that and save having to pull the motor out anyway um, that's one of the jobs we have to do just give it a clean up it needs a bit of an adjustment as well I've um, just I just want to check the timing on it make sure that's uh, correct and uh, adjust the linkage um, uh, the shift linkage also and the clutch and the clutch just seems to be a little bit weird with the pedal there's a little bit of play. Uh, I only just noticed this today when I popped it in here. But the pedal, if we have a look, there's there's something going wrong there. I've got a feeling the spring might be broken down the back. As you can see, there's a bit of free play before anything actually happens. So, yeah, we'll have to have a look at that as well and see what's going on. Anyway, uh... Yeah, so that's what we've got to do, and let's get cracking on it. And also, yes, I have had a haircut. Unfortunately, my mum decided to hold, pin me down and get the shearers, but I don't know. They reckon I look younger. We'll see. I don't know. Uh, I think Paul's in there sleeping. We'll just let him do his thing as usual. Okay, let's go. Okay, so the first thing we are going to do is tackle the front uh, discs. And uh, we... Um, Pop the hubcaps off, get the wheels off, and start disassembling the brakes. Let's get crack a lacking.
Okay, so we've got the drum brake uh, debacle off uh, and we're just going to end up using those same brake lines for the discs because they're actually quite new. And the next thing now is we have to remove the single, um, the single master cylinder there and they're actually, as we've found out, illegal in Australia. I think they changed the law in 2009. So a single circuit um, is deemed too unsafe. Obviously, if you do have a, a leak, uh, you're going to have no brakes. So we're going to swap that over to the dual circuit. And of course, I've just taken the brake switch off. That's why it's dripping right there. I'll uh, undo all the brake lines, get that out of the way, and we can fit the new one. And then we're going to go and put the booster up in that spot over there again. So let's get going. Right, eh? So here is the master cylinder, and that's the uh, the dual reservoir version, uh, obviously for rear brakes, front brakes, and um, you end up with a little spacer, little um, aluminium spacer here that needs to go in, and a rubber boot, and obviously the nuts and bolts, and that obviously mounts into the location where the the single master cylinder version was. Now I've already taken that out because um, I forgot to film it, doofus. Uh, anyway, um, yeah, so it obviously just goes back in that same location. Now what has to happen with the brake lines is they will have to be slightly modified to fit uh, the ports where they need to go in. Uh, and obviously we need to still bolt the brake booster up there and put some rib nuts in it and make a bracket. And then obviously do all the... Uh, the, um, the rest of the plumbing, the vacuum line, which is going to run down the chassis rail, down the side down there, into the engine bay. So let's get the master cylinder in position and move on with the job. Okay, so here is the master cylinder bolted into its spot. And you can see there I've got the brake light, uh, the brake switch hooked up. We've still got to do a little bit of plumbing. Uh, there is the, the booster. It's the... VH, VH40 and that's been bought just off eBay and that's a remote booster basically it's got a bleed a bleed nipple and two ports one of them will go to the master cylinder and the other one goes to the brakes so I suppose the next thing we've got to do is make a bracket for this thing um, and it's going to live in the same spot where I put the other ones, just in that little void here, just a nice little area to, to mount it. Um, some people use the, the bay window um, master cylinders and mount them in between the beam here and basically put a, bra a bracket in and then run the rod straight through. I just like this way because it's a bit, a bit uh, easier to do, but uh, anyway. And then, of course, we've just got to reroute route, uh, some of these. These two will need a joiner between them. Uh, and then we've got to run the vacuum line, which is that one there, and that vacuum line will run to the engine. Now we'll probably have to pull the engine out to do that job because it's a little bit difficult to get to the manifold and we have to drill and tap it. So let's get the brake booster mounted and we've got to make a bracket for it. Okay, so here's the uh, bracket that I have made up. Just used a little bit of um, galvanized uh, steel, it's probably about two mil thick, and of course put a couple of um, rib nuts in here to bolt it into it, and then just picked up the locations off the booster, uh, top and bottom there, and then for a bit of extra security, we've just got an extra uh, little bracket that comes off the back here. I'm not sure if you can see that one there. So I've just got an extra bracket going into another rib nut there, and that's pretty much it. That's uh, you know it's super solid. It's not going anywhere. And then obviously the plumbing lines uh, going to the various spots. So uh, we will now continue with the uh, the discs. So one of the next uh, jobs we have to put is put this backing plate which holds the caliper. And it's got you can see it's got a machined face on it, which uh, um, gives it a relief, I suppose. But anyway, that um, goes on like so. And those holes obviously line up in the appropriate spot which is right there like so so it has a slight kilter up to it 
So we will just uh, grab some bolts and whack them in. Okay, so here we go. We've just uh, mounted the uh, disc brake on. Obviously put the bearings on and uh, I forgot to just film, you know, screwing on the uh, the two nuts, the locking nuts and the little tab, but you guys have seen it before. And obviously the, um, the grease cap that goes on. And then of course the caliper just mounts on through those back brackets just there, you can see. And um, all is good. And of course, you know, when they're new, they do spin. You've, you've got a little bit of that brake noise um, happening. But obviously that'll, uh, once we've bed them in and taken it for a drive, It'll free up a little bit more, but there's, you know, a little bit of grab still going around there. Uh, sometimes with these calipers, you do need to clearance them a little bit just in these corners here. They're not quite perfect. That's why you can see a little bit of yellow paint just there. I was just running that around to see where it was just touching. And a little Dremel just on the inside. Um, just take away a little bit of the casting and um, make sure that they spin well. Uh, but anyway, that's uh, that's that part done. So the discs are on, um, and you know, like I said before, I am just running the stock uh, stock brake uh, brake line, which just goes to its normal location. I still have to just clip it off onto the clip at the back there. But uh, that is pretty much it. So uh, wide five uh, disc front end on. Right, so I've moved on to the back. Forgot to <laughs> video pulling the motor out, but you guys have seen that before many times. Um, and the reason I pulled the motor out is just so I can get to the manifold to drill our little hole for the uh, brake booster uh, little brass barb that's got to go in. So I'm going to pull the carby off now and just get that all prepared, ready to um, to put that in. And then, of course, over here I have to, um, you can see there, I've got the vacuum line running from front to back. We've got some clamps to clamp that in posi on the side of the chassis. And then obviously we're going to have to drill a hole through. Uh, I'm thinking probably just down here, around this section just here. And then we can run it run it through into the motor. Um, interesting job. Anyway, we'll uh, get this carby off and uh, get this thing prepared for drilling. So a nice little discovery I found. I was just pulling off the, um, the fuel line off the carby. And I, look, I looked down uh, on the manifold stalk here, and lo and behold, there's actually a little outlet coming off it, and someone's gone and blocked it off with a piece of rubber hose. So guess what? It looks like that is going to be my perfect spot to plumb in the uh, rubber line. And I think I can probably just get that off with a screwdriver. Let's just try this. Yeah, look at that. That's just going to yank that out with my finger. Oh my god, that is, and I think it's per, it's the perfect diameter too. So, clamp, yeah, that is awesome. Look at that, just down in there. So I don't know whether that's factory or not. Doesn't look factory to me. I don't know if someone's actually gone and done that, but hey, I'll take it. <laughs> that's fantastic. Means I don't have to pull this thing apart. Kind of a bit of a bummer I didn't notice it earlier because then I wouldn't have had to um, pull the motor out. Well, actually I did have to still pull the motor out because we had a little bit of an issue with the clutch. And I've got a feeling the throw out bearing was getting stuck or something was going on here. And I don't know if that's right or not. But it just, the pedal went a little bit, um, for the first inch of travel, the pedal was all floppy. And I was like, what's going on? And then it, I heard a clunk. And then all of a sudden it was all stiff again. So I'm thinking, I don't know if it was binding on something or it doesn't look like it. And I mean, look at it, the clutch face down here, that looks all pretty good too. So not really sure what happened. Um, anyway, it, uh, I'll just give this a clean with some uh, brake cleaner and um, put a bit of grease on uh, the spline there and just make sure she all goes back home again. But anyway, that's um, that's good news about uh, not having to drill and tap and do all those weird stuff. I can just basically put the hose straight onto it. Um, happy days. All right, well, let's uh, get this motor back in. Okay, so you can see how I've just mounted the seat belts. There's a mounting uh, hole here. We've got an L-shaped bracket. It goes through the floor with the uh, 
the factory big washer on the underneath of it and then up on the uh, B pillar there we've got a, um, a plate method of actually uh, putting them in the back but they were actually already in the in the vehicle when I got it so I didn't actually have to do any welding on this one which is good and then obviously just bolts in to that pillar and obviously being retractable uh, they go in and out so good little upgrade obviously the um, this the center straps just go down into the floor and there's a, a factory location down there uh, for, for those seat belts to bolt in so it's quite quite an easy mount really to put them in um, and then obviously the back the back seats uh, normally you just run a, a lap sash on each one of those and that takes care of that so that's the seat belts done okay so we've got the motor back in I've just started it up to give it a bit of a warm-up and we're gonna go and take it for a test drive just to check out the brakes make sure uh, everything's working well uh, yeah, so she's got uh, disc brakes. We've fitted the seat belts as well. So have a look in there. We've got the um, the new seat belts all mounted. So that'll keep uh, the client happy. And uh, still, we have to put the front uh, number plate back on it. Uh, never got mounted there, so we've got to do that. But all in all, we're ready to. Uh, Get it out of here just letting it warm up it's pretty pretty cold here this morning so let it warm up and uh we'll go and take it for a drive and see how everything goes with this uh vacuum boosted assisted disc brake front end all right guys well we will sign out from this one i'll catch you in the next video it's only a pretty quick one but uh anyway she's got a few uh improvements now and hopefully a few uh more many years of um faithful service Alright guys, catch you later. Woo!